Another year, another 20 win challenge come and gone. Four years of badges. Did you get yours? Did you get five wins? Did you get 16 wins? Did you get that elusive 20 win challenge badge? Well, I know I didn't yet again. Uh, hopefully you <laughs> did. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Let's see. Let's see your 20 win badge. That's what I thought. That's Andrew Guy. I am Rich Slayton, and this is Three Crowns, your bi weekly home for Clash Royale esports news and beyond. Andrew, I know that you and I and millions of players all gave our best. A valiant effort, but only a few thousand got that 20-win challenge badge. That's right, and to no one's surprise, you and I were not on that list once again, but there were, like you said, thousands of players. Almost 5,000 people were able to complete that 20-win challenge. We are going to talk about some of the most popular and most successful decks that got them to those 20 wins in just a moment. I'm also going to be sitting down with Lucas X Gamer, the most recent winner of our golden tickets out in the world, and of course, if stage one is done, the 20 21 challenge is done. That means we're moving on to stage two, a secret ladder competition. More on that in just a minute. But first, let's talk about those decks. That's right, Andrew. There were a few decks that totally dominated the Clash Royale League 20 win qualifier challenge. And one of them was an absolute classic 2.6 hog cycle. Love it or hate it, it simply will not go away. My guess is Oyasu probably did a 2.6 win with that one. He's kind of known for those 2.6 hog cycle decks. That one put up dozens upon dozens of wins in the 20 win challenge. Another deck that got 20 wins quite frequently, a cousin of 2.6 hog cycle, Royal Hogs AQEQ. -E so popular throughout this year, a bit of a fall off this summer, but has done very well as of late. Ian77, the very popular hog cycle player for Hog EQ, got a nice 20 win challenge with that Royal Hogs Archer Queen deck as well. Another one that was really dominant all the way through this one was the Riley deck, the Riley version of Logbait, the Mighty Miner Logbait variation. So fast with that cycle. And one note for all three of those decks, all three of those decks are Log Cannon decks. Hmm, was that important for this 20 win challenge? Now the big shocker here, a deck that came out of nowhere in the last few days, the last couple hours overall of the 20 win challenge to become a uh, pretty much the most popular deck of winning this grand championship. It was Royal Hogs, S Giant Skeleton, Mother Witch, Zappies, Mirror, this really weird uh, uh, Royal Ghost in the mix there, the Fisherman Arrows. What a weird deck that kind of came out of nowhere and became the dominant deck of the 20 win challenge. So maybe you grabbed onto that the last minute and finally got that badge for you. But those decks were very popular here for this competition. The question is, will those decks stay viable as we move into our next phase, as we move into the dual mode phase of Clash Royale League? Only time will tell. We'll have more on that phase later. But for now, let's take a moment to sit down with one of the top players in Clash Royale overall. Finally got his golden ticket out of Brazil. Lucas X Gamer sits down with my friend Andrew Guy. Hey, Rich, thank you so much, man. I am here with Lucas X Gamer. Tribe Lucas, call him what you want. One of the best Brazilians in the world, maybe the best hair in the game. Lucas, my friend, congratulations. You finally got your golden ticket. How does it feel, man? Is it just a huge relief? Thank you so much, Andrew. It's for sure uh, a huge relief. Um, I don't know if I could handle like the Elvis qualifiers. Um, the past months have been kind of tough. Being so close like two times and then getting to the third time was an outstanding um, feeling like I knew I was getting so close and it was constantly constantly getting there and and the third time I finally made it it's such a relief I just got some big weight out of my shoulders. I, I can imagine. I, so that's exactly what I was going to ask you next is it felt like you were always coming in second place this season time and time again. Three times you ended in second place. What was that like? What was it like for you in terms of, you know, were you ever worried you weren't going to make it to Worlds? Was it making you even like more prepared to ready to go out there and fight? The first couple of months I was like kind of worried. I wasn't really doing well in the competitions. Like the first three competitions, I came first. Uh, I came second on the first one, and the next two ones I had a surgery on the second, so I couldn't even get past I think the second phase. And the third one uh, I didn't make it. I was like kind of mentally tilted or something like that. I was really worried. When it came to All Stars, I started to work on my emotional, and I came second. But 
I felt good because I knew I did my best. I knew I played way better than I played the past two qualifiers that I was so mentally worried all the time. And I just took a deep breath and thought, okay, it's fine. I got it. There's still Royal Masters. Uh, I can do well on it. I can do it. I knew I was playing good. I knew I was doing fine. I knew I had the level to, to make it. So I just took a deep breath and thought, okay, it's fine. Two times second, <laughs> that's absolutely fine. You got a lot of money. You got there. You know you have the what it takes. I know, and, and and I, you know, I don't know how many of the Three Crowns episodes you've watched, but I've always said like Lucas is a hundred percent going to be at World Finals. But like you said, it kept getting tougher and tougher as the year went on. I actually want to talk to you about coming in second place when you were live. You know, for DreamHack, um, what was that like being in front of a crowd, being in front of your other competitors again? And do you think that's actually going to give you an advantage at World Finals, where you'll be there live with the competitors and a big audience? Those sure. A lot good for me because I got to meet all the people uh, I've known for years online, and it was such a good experience. Like I played on stage, I was nervous at first, but then uh, <laughs> I got kind of used to it. So I, I think it will help uh, for sure. It's not the same feeling as awards, and the crowd on awards will be for sure much bigger. But having my first live experience is for sure gonna help me. Even though it wasn't like the same, it's gonna help. That's enough. Much people there don't, don't have the experience at all. Even big names like Muhammad, like Mugi, they never experienced that. And it's gonna be the same for almost everyone. So I just need to get used to it. It's good to hear that even though it took you a while to get that golden ticket, it feels like you do have an advantage going to World Finals. And talking about World Finals, you just mentioned Mugi, you just mentioned Mo. Are those your two biggest competitors, you think, going into Worlds? Or is there someone else that maybe you're thinking about that doesn't have a ticket yet? Or maybe someone like Arden Toas? Or is it just beating Lucas? Is it just you playing better than, or playing as best as you know you can? What do you think is your biggest competition as you get to World Finals? Uh, I think, first of all, my mentality will matter a lot. So I need to be there. If I give my 100%, I'll for sure have a way bigger uh, chance. But yeah, we can like uh, pretend that Mo and Mugi aren't there. They're the biggest contenders. Um, since last year so yeah Mo and Mugi for sure are the the two biggest like uh, contenders for this uh, I know I'm not uh, an underdog or something like that I know I could be a favorite too so I'm fine with that I think Morden could also be a name because uh, I think he might make it on August and he has a lot of live experience so I'm pretty sure he's gonna be really tough to beat if he makes it because it's gonna be live it's gonna be a big crowd and he's used it to it yeah that's actually a really really good point that you make about morton having that stage experience uh just a couple more questions then i'll let you go man i know you got to get to practicing uh you just mentioned morton is he one of your biggest other players out there that hasn't qualified yet do you think Wallace will be there? Do you think Viper? Who Who is one player that you think will 100% be at World Finals that is not there yet? Uh, I think I would say Borden because he handles the pressure pretty well. I don't know how the other players mentality going to be on this Argos thing since they haven't made it on the past months. Grico, for example, got close a lot of times too. Not as close as like coming second, but this one, this last one, he, he got one best of three away, just like me. And he's had a good year. I don't know how his mentality gonna be. I don't know how about Wallace, I don't know about Viper. Uh, all of them got really close. I would say probably more than because of the mentality thing, because of the, the decision making. He's a pretty solid player. And I think when it comes to wards or something like that, he's always there, so. It's, uh, I mean, you know I'm a huge Morton fan. I have been since day one. Uh, I, we're going to wrap this up. One of the things that you've talked about a lot today that I love is how much you're focusing on your mentality. I know you've got the skill. I know you've got the deck pull. And I agree, mentality is probably the biggest thing when you get to that live arena. So I love that your head's in the right space. Uh, Lucas, you have a ton of fans out there here in the States, all over the world, of course, back home in Brazil. Is there anything that you want to say to your fans before we say goodbye to you? I just want to thank them for the, the support. 
really means a lot. It really helps a lot when I'm handling everything. When I get on the the live streams and I read the chats and the people, there's people like cheering for me, rooting for me, and I'm like, them. They like me. They they want to see me play, and they're happy. I'm there. They're happy if I win. They're sad if I lose. Of course, there's always gonna be people that don't like you, but that's that's the same for everyone. So. I just want to thank you all for the, the support. It really means a lot. It really like uh, motivates me to, to keep going. And uh, I hope I can do my best on piling. I'm sure you will, man. I, I love how mature you sound. I'm so excited to see you in Helsinki. We'll get to hang out. Maybe you can give me some tips on how to play. I'm sure I could use a bunch. Uh, but best of luck to you at World Finals, Lucas. I'll be rooting for you. And I'll see you in about a month. Thank you so much for seeing you piling too. I'm excited to meet you. <laughs> All right, brother. Take care. Take care. Thanks, Andrew. Now, Lucas has done a lot on his journey to Clash Royale League World Finals in Helsinki this September. But one thing he doesn't have to do, qualify anymore. And that's what's next for those 20 win challenge victors. They have to go into our next phase starting August 15th. That's the latter phase where for just under a week, each player can play up to 10 games a day to gain or lose ranking inside of that ladder system. At the end of that period of our stage two, the top 128 players will move on to our stage three starting August 27th. That's when we begin our official Clash Royale League broadcast. You can tune in on all your official Clash Royale League channels, including this one right here where you're watching this show to catch all the action for stage three, four, and beyond. Of course, we have double elimination, our Swiss multiple elimination brackets, our last chance qualifier, all those players trying to get those last 10 spots for Clash Royale League World Finals in Helsinki. Now, you might not be playing in it, but of course you can watch it here on this channel. And of course you can follow along with all of the action inside your Clash Royale app at the Tournament Hub. Go to the left-hand side of your screen where you see the Clash Royale League logo. Click that button and there is all your information, standings, results, and everything you need to know to stay up with Clash Royale League qualifiers as we get ready for that World Finals. Andrew! That's the, the end of all the important information, but of course, we have a lot more of our summer to go. August, September, a lot of players, thousands competing to get that 20 win badge. They did or didn't get it. Now we're down to a few thousand trying to make their way through. And I know that we have some favorites who we're hoping to see at World Finals. For me, of course, uh, I want to see our old boy Morton. Everyone wants to see Morton at World Finals. Air Surfer in the mix, but some big content creators completed as well. I saw B-Rad out there. I believe Cashman got a 20. I mean, who knows? We might see anybody yeah. there at World Finals. Yeah, and of course, a lot of the favorites out there like Wallace, Ian, uh, Asaf that are expected to be at World Finals Viper, but haven't quite got that golden ticket yet. But like you said, that tournament hub button is awesome. You know, we played this game for so long. Every time you open up your app and you see something new, that part of the uh, app has all the information that you guys are going to need to follow along with this scene as we move forward throughout the summer. And of course, what else can you guys do? Rich just said it. We're going to be broadcasting here on this channel. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. You do not want to miss any CRL action. Like Rich just said, we're going to go from thousands down to just a little over 100. And then we're going to cut that down every single time. Go follow esports.clashroyale.com, esportsroyale.en on Twitter. Check Rich out. Check myself out. And of course, AC and Eric as well. And of course, next week, once we figure out how many players are remaining, or I guess in two weeks, we'll be doing some predictions as who will be at World Finals. For everybody here at Clash Royale League, I'm Rich Slayton, that's Andrew Guy. We'll see you back here next time on Three Crowns.